As we talk about the fundamentals of being a Christian and believing in God, we can't leave out forgiveness, especially if our last episode uh, was discussing grace for yourself. Now, you can handcuff grace and forgiveness um, together because they work really, they really are hand in hand. You're giving yourself grace, you're giving yourself forgiveness, you're giving other um, people grace, you're giving a forgiveness of other people. So now, tonight, we're going to be talking about forgiveness for other people. Now, it might be easier for you to forgive a child or loved one and friend um, who you know um, either didn't mean what they're doing or they're going through something or, you know, some example, some, some instance where it makes it easy for you to forgive them because you care and you have that compassion. It might be more difficult for you to forgive somebody who you don't know all that well or who you have a contentious relationship with or we can even turn the tables maybe it is more difficult for you to um, forgive a loved one or a family member because they are so close to you the pain is the pain feels deeper because of what they did and that you feel like they should know better than to hurt you the way that they do because they know you and they they're supposed to care about you and you might find it easier to forgive somebody who um, you don't have as close of a relationship with because they don't know you and it doesn't affect you as much. Whichever way you want to turn it, um, forgiveness is divine, as they say. And that's such, a, that's such a truism in life because one of the things that we're, we are asking for God to do is to forgive us of the multitude of mistakes that we make. Now, who am I to tell you this? Now, I'm nobody. My name's Stuart Davis. I'm a deacon at a small church just outside of Richmond, Virginia. I'm not trying to get you to join my congregation or donate to any special cause or anything. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a biblical scholar or a pastor, minister, or a missionary. But what I am is a flawed man. And I'm, I'm a flawed man trying to basically... Um, speak out to folks who might be looking for Christ or trying to begin begin a relationship with God to understand that Christians aren't that all that different from uh, from anybody else you might meet uh, we have their same struggles the difference is is where we're where we're working in the end to, to be in the end and if you're looking for if you're looking for meaning and purpose if you're looking for the the, the true reason for life look no further than Christianity and look no further than God. So, getting back to that, because this is this is a key one of, like I said in the last episode, for grace. Being a flawed man, understanding you're a flawed person, um, is a key step in in forgiveness and expecting for or or desiring forgiveness for yourself. But what kind of person would we be if we didn't um, if we asked forgiveness for ourselves, but we weren't willing to give it to other people? Now, forgiveness is something that I, in, the, in the past, and even to this day, I've struggled with heavily. I'm a reactionary person. I've been in a lot of instances where I felt wronged, um, real or imagined, um, and it's been difficult for me oftentimes, especially when the other person um, is, is, does not show contrition. Um, I find it much easier to forgive somebody if I know that they're sorry or they may, they try to make amends in some way or there's some sort of conversation there than if, you know, either they I feel like they got away with doing something wrong or whatever. Big example of that, high middle school and high school for me. I didn't have a lot of friends uh, growing up. Um, I didn't live in a neighborhood. I was very isolated at, uh, at home. And I was I was a troubled kid in in a um, in a behavioral sense, and a lot of kids didn't really know 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 how to react to me growing up. And kids, as we know, are can be cruel, and I'm no different from that. I was bullied in high school, middle school, and high school, and I bullied people in middle school and high school as well. Now I land <laughs> I land ended up landing more on the bullied side, um, and for that middle school and high school was a very lonely place for me and not a very fun place for me. When I graduated high school, I could not be happier. And I held, it person, I held a, a personal um, grudge against a great multitude of folks that I went to school with. 
Now, it took me uh, actually going to church, where I go to church now, a, uh, a couple of folks who I knew from that time and did not think liked me very much, at least then, uh, showing up at that church. And it was weird and a little anxious for me to be there with them. Because um, we didn't talk that much to each other. But um, as we you know, as we spoke to people that we both knew and the circles kind of tightened up a little bit, I realized that uh, maybe other people didn't either don't remember or have been trying to move on um, from their own past. And who am I really to to be diff be any different, to hold them accountable? I've made mistakes too. I made mistakes in high school. Maybe I, I, like I said, I, I, I bullied some kids as well. Um, so one of the things that I, I, I set about doing was forgiving, forgiving them. Um, and one of the, and that's, that's the real road. The road to forgiveness is an uphill battle. And, um, and I think that if you've ever been through the process of forgiving somebody or, or people, um, you'll understand it because that it's, it's getting to that part in your mind where you think it, it's just an uphill, um, struggle to get to the point where you go, okay, I think I'm ready to let it go. And then you do, and it's just like jumping off the top of the precipice. And you just, you're free at, at that point. Uh, you might forgive people. You might, have, if you think back about it, try thinking about people that you've forgiven and you don't even remember forgiving them because you don't, you don't think about it anymore. That's a big thing. That's a big obstacle in our mind that, that either we or Satan or whoever um, constructs to make it difficult. Now, I'm not saying forget. Don't forget about uh, the feelings that you had or how hurt you were. You might that might come in time, depending on what goes on. Those those emotions, those feelings, those memories will serve to kind of help you, help guide you in future um, future encounters with people. Um, some folks think that. Um, then when you forgive somebody, you are forgetting. I don't subscribe to that. I'm not saying that I'm right, but I kind of feel like if if you if you forget or, or re requiring somebody to forget puts them in a position of vulnerability. I don't think that uh, that God wants wants us to, wants to require us to be exposed to. He wants us to continue giving people chances, but he wants our eyes to be open at the same time. So. Um, Take for that what you will. I think that's more of a, you know, as you read the Bible, get the, get the impression that you get out of it. I don't know if that's a make or I don't think that's a make or break thing, and I don't think if it was asked for you to forgive to forget what somebody did for you, um, that that would, that that is a a knock against you, even if you believe that you shouldn't have to forgive. Getting off topic. The thing, the 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 focal point here, is is forgiveness and how you feel at the end of it. Do you feel better at the end? Do you think it'll help you improve your relationship not only with that person, should they, should things turn, should y'all's relationship turn for the better? Um, or will it, and will it improve your own, um, your own mental well-being? I think it does for both. Even in instances where the person is not sorry for what they did, even if the person does not even know what went on, even if the person's going to continue doing whatever it was that, uh, that you forgave them for, remember, you're gonna make mistakes continually. You're gonna make the same mistakes in some, in some instances. Do you want somebody holding you accountable for that? And should that be your motivation for, should that be your motivation for forgiving? The motivation behind this needs to be love and all in all concepts, but however you're arriving there, if you're trying to connect it to love, you're on the right track. Keep this in mind as you go through, um, as you go through life, as you go through this this journey uh, to to learn more about God and to learn more about what it is to be a Christian and be a better person. And um, and I hope it works out for you. I hope it works out for myself because, like I said, I'm still a work in progress on this as it is. But I will say, I do feel better every time I do it, and I bet you will too. In the meantime, Godspeed, folks. God bless.